Hi, church family. We're going to share together some faith foundations that hopefully are an encouragement for you and for uh, your faith, especially um, during this time of, uh, of kind of craziness and being stuck in our homes. And so um, we have 14 different faith foundations that we've kind of uh, discovered uh, in the Bible and that are important um, for our family, and we would like to share them with you. And so uh, we're not going to share all 14, uh, but we're going we're gonna to start with one tonight, okay? And so uh, the first one is, uh, who is God? And uh, so I have a ball here. It's a basketball, regular basketball. And uh, one of the tricks that I can do uh, is to spin it like this. And so how does the ball spin? Does it do it all by itself? What do you think, girls? No. No, it doesn't spin all by itself, right? I have to spin it, right? And that's true for our world as well, is that our world, all, all our entire creation, didn't just happen all by itself. There had to be a starting presence. And we believe without a doubt that God is our starting presence. He's the starting presence for everything and everyone. And so the first faith foundation is this. Well, who is God? And so that's a question, who is God? And there's two answers to that question. Who is God? The first answer to that question, who is God, is, is what, girls? God is, the first and foremost being. God is the first and foremost being. That means he's the one who started it all. He's the first one, right? And foremost, it's kind of like a big word, but it just means that God is the greatest. There's no one greater than God. God is, he's, he's, magnificent, right? He's the best. He's the one who's our creator. And uh, there's a Bible verse in Isaiah 44, verse 6. Alethea, you want to read that verse? Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first, and I am the last. Besides me, there is no God. So God tells us in his word, he's the first and the last. He's the beginning and the end. And there's no God that is like him. He's the greatest God. All the other gods are false or substitute gods. And so who is God? Well, God is first and foremost. He's the first and foremost being. And then the second answer is to who is God is, is what? God is Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's right. God is Trinity. God is Trinity. Another big word. And it's actually a word that is not found in the Bible, interestingly enough. But it's a way that we've kind of, uh, people in the past have been able to describe the fact that God is three, yet he's one. And so Trinity is three and one. And the three is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Father is God. The Son, Jesus, is God. And the Holy Spirit is God. And we know that the Father is not the Son. The Father is not the same as Jesus. They're just different persons, right? And we know the Father isn't the Spirit, or Jesus isn't the Spirit. They're, they're all three distinct in individuals, three different persons. But each one of them um, are together, and each one of them are, are equally God. And that's kind of hard to understand, to be honest with you. It's hard for me to understand. It's hard for anybody to understand. Um, there's different illustrations that people have used uh, to try to understand that. You can think about time, right? Time, it's only one time, but there's a, a past, there's a present, and there's also a future, right? All three of them are time, but they're distinct. They're, they're different, right? Or you can think of water which is uh, is made up, uh, like if you boil water, what happens to boil water? Steam. Steam, right? If you freeze it, what happens? It's frozen. Ice. It's frozen. It's ice, right? And, um, and then if you uh, melt that ice down, it becomes liquid, right? And so there are three different things, but they're one, right? And you can do a lot of different things. An egg has a shell, a yolk, and a white, or a tree has... Uh, roots, a trunk, and then branches. And so those are just maybe some helpful ways to be thinking about it, that, you know, there is a three in oneness all around us. And we just have to open up our minds and our eyes and, and to think a little bit about that and what that might look like. All in all, 
all these illustrations are going to fail to compare to what exactly who God is as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But we know that that's who God is. God is Trinity. And ultimately, we know that God, he's the He's not just the starting presence for us, but he's the, the sustaining presence for us as well. And so one of the things that hangs up in our house is a picture. What is this, girls? Anchor. Right, it's a picture of an anchor, right? This is something that uh, Miss Danielle created. I think some of the other ladies did as well at one of the ladies' events that we had as a church. But it's an anchor. And so I want to kind of close with that, is that just as uh, an anchor is used in a boat, when uh, a boat is... In the middle of uh, the Chesapeake Bay or the ocean or sea or something, and there's crashing waves or there's storm winds, uh, what does the people do in the boat? Well, they take and throw out the anchor because that's the, the anchor is what holds them still. The anchor is what grounds them and keeps them from wandering far, far away out to sea and getting lost. And so the anchor is what holds us. It helps us to stay grounded with a foundation. And that's true of who God is. God is our anchor. He's the one who, who holds us firm in uh, difficult times. He loves us and we can trust him. Gosh, he loves us so much. He loves us so much that he died on the cross for our sins so that we can experience grace. We can experience forgiveness we can experience the fact that God uh, isn't just all up in heaven. He's also with us in the Holy Spirit. And so Matthew 28, 18 through 20 says that Jesus told us that all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to him. And he told us to go and make disciples. That means go and share all these teachings, all these faith foundations with other people. And to make disciples of all nations, baptizing people in his name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And then he says, behold, he's with us always to the end of the age. And so he's not just the starting presence. He's also the sustaining power in our lives. He's our anchor. That's who God is. He's the first and foremost being. And God is Trinity. God bless you. Say bye. Bye. Love you, church.